Hi. Before starting this presentation, let me give you a brief introduction of myself. My name is Shashank, an experienced wireless researcher with 5 years of product development and QA experience. I hope most of you who are viewing this presentation might have viewed my previous presentations on Zigbee basics and power save modes supported by 802.11 protocols. If not, please do have a look at them and help me in improvising my presentation and my understanding of technology. Wi-Fi technology has evolved from 11B to 11N. In real-time deployment, it's not practical to replace all the legacy devices from or with 11N devices. Hence, standard has provided protection mechanisms which help in smoother operation during interoperability of multiple standard Wi-Fi devices. These protection mechanisms helps to maintain the performance as expected. So now, let's view the presentation on protection mechanisms supported by 802.11 protocols. Here is the outline of this presentation. This presentation includes understanding the need for protection mechanisms, understanding and analyzing the scenarios where protection mechanism is required, and finally, briefly explaining the types of protection mechanisms and under what circumstances they are applied. Before going in detail, first let's question ourselves, why do we need protection mechanisms? Just have a quick think about it. Here are the reasons for the need for protection mechanisms. To provide smoother operation of various Wi-Fi standard devices during interoperability. Hasty transmissions cannot be decrypted by 802.11 ABG devices, which are in shown in orange and pink and green circles. 11G OF OFDM transmissions cannot be decrypted by 11B devices, which is shown in green colored circle. The adjacent block diagram represents four different scenarios where interoperability of various Wi-Fi standard devices is observed. Let, let me explain you the details of protection in my next slide. Here are four different scenarios that are possible in real-time deployments. Let me explain you all the scenarios in detail and where protection mechanisms come into existence and what type of protection mechanisms are applied. So let's look at the scenario one. The scenario one is as indicated in the green circle in the adjacent diagram. This scenario is not valid for recent deployments since 11B devices are hardly available in the mar market as well as are hardly manufactured by any vendors. However, this type of network persists in older deployments. In this case, 11G transmissions should be protected since 11B cannot, be decry cannot decrypt OFDM transmissions. Now let's go to scenario 2 which is the orange circle. So this type of ne network is practically possible and persists even in new deployments. In this type of case, both 11G and ST transmissions should be protected. 11G should be protected since 11B cannot decrypt 11G transmissions. Similarly, HT transmissions cannot be decrypted by both 11B and 11G devices since transmission technology is different and preamble is also transmitted with HT rate except in case of HT mix mode frame format. HT mix mode frame format will be explained to you in detail later in this presentation. Now let's go to scenario 3 which is pink circle in the adjacent diagram. 
this is a real time deployment however if such deployment persists hash to transmissions cannot be protect pro, cannot be decrypted by both 11b and 11g devices i'm sorry hash to transmissions cannot be protected oh, sorry cannot be decrypted by 11a devices the reason is similar as explained in scenario 2 and in and the last and final scenario which is possible is scenario 4 which is represented in the black circle this type of network is also practically possible and persists even in new deployments in these type of cases both 11g 11a and S3 transmissions should be protected. 11G should be protected since 11B cannot decrypt 11G transmissions and similarly H3 transmission should be protected since all the le legacy protocol devices cannot understand H3 transmissions nor decrypt the H3 transmissions. Now in the upcoming slide let's look at the type of protection mechanism that are supported by dot 11 protocol during interoperable interoperability of multiple wi-fi standard devices so the first type or the first method that was being used in the 802.11 protect protocol was erp protection me mechanism this type of protection mechanisms has come into existence in case of scenario 1, 2 and 4 respectively. Okay. The types of mechanisms that are used to have ERP protection mechanisms are RTS-CTS and CTS to self mechanisms. In a BSS the ERP protection mechanism is detected by looking at the use protection bit status uh, in the ERP information element. And the next protection mechanism is HT pro protection mechanism. HT protection mechanisms is or are enabled when there are legacy devices present in the vicinity of 11N devices. HT protection is determined by viewing HT beacon. HT beacon. HT stations use the operating mode and non-green non field stations present field in the HT information element to determine whether or not to use protection so as explained you in previous slide the two fields that are being used for the protection mechanism for ST protection mechanism or the operating mode and the non greenfield for non greenfield HT station present field so let me explain you in this slide the details of these two uh, info these two parameters so the operating mode parameter there of four types or else they can be called uh, they can also be called as mode 0 to mode 4 mode 3 sorry so in mode 0 Let me explain you in detail about all the modes that belong to the operating mode parameters. So in case of mode 0, if all stations in the BSS are 2040 MHz HD capable or if the BSS is 2040 MHz capable or if all the stations in the BSS are 20 MHz HD stations in a 20 MHz BSS. 
and mode 1 it's also called as HT non member protection mode this is used this bit is set or this is set when there are non HT stations or APs are present in the primary and secondary channels of the BSS and next comes the mode 2 which is otherwise called as 20 megahertz protection mode this mode is set if only HT st stations are associated in the BSS and at least 120 megahertz HT station is associated to the, big, uh, to the <coughs> BSS and the mode 3 it's called non HT mix mode is used if one or more non HT stations are associated in the BSS and the other parameter as I mentioned you before was the non greenfield HT stations presence field this is a one one bit field the non greenfield, non -greenfield stations present has two states based on non GF HT stations present in the BSS if non GF HT stations are present in the BSS HT GF protection is used from my experiment experimental analysis I have found that you can basically call mode 0 as pure mode just like we used to have with just 11 G if the 11 and AP hears nearby APs and stations that are non ST capable then it flips over to mode 1 if a non ST station associates to an 11 N AP it flips over to mode 3 mode 2 is for when all HT stations are associated and at least 120 megahertz slow poke connects to the BSS just have a look at this slide this slide explains you in detail about whatever I have mentioned you in my previous slide now let's go to the next slide so this table actually represents all the scenarios that are possible and the type of mechanism me mechanisms that can be used uh, in all the types of protection for example as I mentioned you earlier the, the protection is enabled based on the operating mode and non greenfield for non greenfield mode a mode so in the table you can see the operating mode ca can be of four types that is the no protection mode non member protection 20 megahertz protection and non ht mixed mode protection and the other field is non greenfield stations present field whereas in case of legacy devices that is in, your scenario, in scenario 1 as explained you earlier in my previous slides the use protection bit is used to advertise to advertise by the uh, by the AP that the protection ha is used in its transmission okay so as you can see <coughs> As you can see from my slides it is very clear what type of protection mechanisms are used in war in different scenarios that might be possible I hope you understand this slide clearly if not please do do not hesitate to mail me or else if I am wrong in my understanding please do mail me thank you and let's let's go to the next slide this slide is very simple and clear and most of you all know how RTS CTS protect uh, RTS CTS 
is implemented and this is also used in case of <coughs> hidden node problem i have included in in this slide just to inform or show you what will be the content in the duration field of rts and cts frames and i hope now you are clear with this slide and similarly it is also in the case of cts to self protection mechanism and finally lsig tx txo protection is an ht type of protection okay so i'll explain you in detail about this protection mechanism LSIC TXO protection is otherwise called as physical layer spoofing protection mechanism. In OFTM frames, the PPD header consists of short training fields, long training fields, and a signal field. Inside the signal